During this past summer, I began experimenting with running the Weak Signals digital communication software JSA Call alongside FL Digi on our VHF off-grid digital communication system. And I found that it allowed me to send signals much further and with lower power. Unfortunately, it was not as simple as just downloading a new piece of software and running it. It was decidedly much more complex. And so I've spent these past several months ironing out all the bugs and learning all the lessons that I need to learn. And I'm ready to share them now with you, starting with TimeSync. One of the trade-offs that we'll have to make and why JSA Call works so well with such weak signals is that the clock on our computer will need to be synced within two seconds of the clock on the computer that we're talking to. Now, this can be problematic because if we can't communicate yet, how the heck can we sync our clocks so closely? We can do this using a tertiary reference point from the signal sent down by GPS satellites. Turns out GPS satellites require a very accurate clock in order to function. And so we can intercept that signal for free using a USB GPS adapter. We can get these on Amazon and I'll put a link in the show notes for one that I found works well and isn't too expensive. We'll also need some software in order to interpret the signals that are coming down from the satellites and use that signal to update our clock. That software will be called Crony. Now, the Smokin' Ape, who's one of the titans of YouTube ham radio, already has a pretty good video on how to download and install that software. And so I'm not gonna duplicate everything that he said, but I do wanna clarify a couple points that he made. And so let's dive right in and do that now. When you're ready, Go ahead and click the link in the show notes below to our Pi setup checklist, or you can always come back here to the homepage for the terminal element, and I've got the link right here in the description. But click on that, and we'll scroll down to section 7, and that has instructions for configuring our GPS adapter. I also have a link to the Smoke and Apes video that I want you to watch. It's down here at the bottom of that section. And his video, it's a very good video, has all the steps you need in order to install Crony, and I'm not going to go through all of his steps because I do really want you to go watch his video but there's a couple things that I think need to be clarified from his instructions. So to start with, we're gonna always, with any Pi project, update our repositories and upgrade all the software. So over here, I've got two terminal windows open. You'll see why here in a moment. Type sudo apt update and, and sudo apt upgrade in the shortcut here to automate the whole thing is why, I hit enter, and it's going to just take a couple minutes to update the repositories and then install any software updates that we need. I know all my stuff's up to date, so it's not going to take too long here. And we're good. I'm going to hit clear. And then the Smoke and Ape has us installing some software. Now, I think what has happened since he made his video in 2020 is Python GPS has been superseded or no longer exists or something because it gives me errors. I don't think it's wrong to try to install that, but what we really need is GPSD and GPSD dash clients. And I've got that over here on my checklist. So we'll type in, we're going to copy and paste into our terminal window, sudo apt install GPSD, GPSD dash clients. I've got this also here. This is for a later GPS project that you might opt to do. You can go ahead and install that now. It doesn't hurt anything to have that on board, but I don't think that's specific to this project. Might as well just have it on board though. So install these two sets of software programs. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already got that stuff installed in my system, but just paste that into a terminal window. All right. Now, the Smoke and Ape, he tells his system to identify his GPS by the port number. And I don't think that's wrong, but I think there's a more specific way that we can tell our system to identify the USB GPS adapter. And so what I want to do to start with is we're going to type ls slash dev slash serial slash by dash ID into a terminal window. Let me come on over here, paste this in hit enter. This is going to show us all the stuff we've got plugged in right now. So first, I've got my digi rig here, that sound card interface. We can ignore this stuff at the top, the USB Silicon Labs. That's classically the digi rig. What I'm really interested in here is at the bottom, USB dash U box. Uh, it says like GPS over here. This is how I know this is our GPS adapter. So I'm going to keep this window up and we're going to open up the GPSD config file. And that is down here, sudo nano. Nano is our text editor. We're going to copy this. Come on over here to our second terminal window. Hit enter. Now, I've already got a lot of stuff entered into here. Yours is going to look a little bit different when you first start. So a lot of the stuff, like the GPSD options and the devices, it's going to just look like two quotation marks here. And you'll have to move your cursor down to like right there to start typing or pasting stuff in. So what we've started out by doing is letting the system know we're going to identify that GPS adapter by name. So 
I've done slash dev slash serial slash by dash ID right here, followed by another slash. You're going to have to manually enter that in. Now, after that second slash, you're going to paste in what we see here. So just highlight this, copy it, and then move your cursor over here, and then paste. Paste that in. And then at the very end of this, I'm going to hit function and then write. It ends with just a close quote. Nothing after that. You just make sure there's an enter afterwards. All right. Now, the rest of this, you're going to just make yours look like mine. Okay. We have GPSD options. We want dash N in the middle of those quotation marks. USB auto needs to be false. Now, I think the smoke and AP initially has that true. And then he corrects it later in his video to tell you to make that false. Where is that at here? GPS auto true and start daemon true. Yeah. So that... GPS auto, I think that's going to cause some problems. So we want GPS auto to be false and then start daemon to be true. All right. Once you have everything on yours looking like mine in that config file, we'll hit control X. And if you had changed anything, it would indicate that you need to press Y and hit enter. After you're done watching the Smoke and Apes video and you've installed Crony, you've ensured that it's running properly and that it's updating your clock, your work is still not done because unfortunately there is a glitch with GPSD. And down here in section 7E, I've got it described. This glitch will allow you to obtain an initial lat long once you boot up your computer. But after that, it doesn't update. You just get that initial fix, that coordinate fix. And as you move about the earth, your coordinates don't update. And so that's not very useful if you want to use this GPS with a mapping program for navigation. And sometimes they've even had it foul up crony. So through painstaking stubbornness, I have found, I have uncovered this fix from the dark corners of the internet. We need to open up a terminal and type UBX tool dash P and then all caps reset. Okay. Here it is. Here's what it looks like. I've just copied that, paste, and enter. And sometimes it doesn't take on the first try. So. It doesn't hurt to just do it one more time and we're done. Now, when we type CGPS and look at that utility that shows us all the information from the USB GPS adapter coming in, after that, we should see our coordinates, our lat long update every couple seconds, even as we're sitting still, just as those GPS satellites get a better lock on us. Now, I don't like this because I don't want to have to type something into a terminal window every time I boot up my computer. So we can apply yet another shortcut and we can create a desktop file that automates that process every time that we start up our computer. So we type in sudo nano and xdg, you can see, you can read it on the screen. All right. So before we go any further, I do want to apologize because even though this is called desktop file, it's not going to be on your desktop. I realize that desktop file makes you think that it's going to be on here somewhere. It's not. Just get past that. We're going to get through this together, okay? I feel your pain. I understand. Just know that it's called desktop file for some stupid reason and it's going to be nowhere near your desktop. So when you click that, you are going to be greeted with a blank page here. I've already got stuff in it, but this is going to be blank. So we're going to have to type this stuff in here. I've got it in the Pi setup checklist, what you need to type, but we'll need to format everything correctly in brackets. It'll need to say desktop entry, name equals GPS, and then exec equals bash dash C, and then in quotes, inside of quotes here, make this a little bit bigger so you can see the close quote. We're going to type in this whole mess of stuff. So first, I want the computer to just sleep and do nothing for 10 seconds as it boots up and as other processes are loading. You know, I don't need to burden it with this GPS thing initially. But after that, we'll use the ampersand ampersand to tell it to wait until it's all done with sleeping. We'll type in that UBX tool reset. And I've added sudo here just to invoke those root privileges just in case. After that, we want to wait and sleep for another 10 seconds. So we've got sleep 10 surrounded by these double ampersands. And then there it is, pseudo reset again. This should create a very robust solution to that GPSD glitch that just automatically takes care of itself every time you boot up your computer. This is what I'm doing when I record these videos, by the way, in case you ever were curious. I'm working on this computer here, but I'm recording with this computer over here, right? So I'm remoting in with the laptop and then it is displaying the screen from that one over there using that VNC connection. 
If you want to learn how to do that, check out a way earlier video in this series. Okay, so some troubleshooting tips. In case you just cannot get Crony to work, make sure that you've got that GPS adapter, the antenna portion of it, hanging way out your window or it has a really, really good clear view of the sky because you're going to be really disappointed with the results if you don't have a, a really good clear signal from those GPS satellites coming out of that antenna. Also, if things just aren't working right, don't be afraid to reboot your computer and try again or try re reinstalling things and you'll make it work. It, it'll work. You, you know, there, there's, there's no doubt about that. This is a tried and true system and tried and true method of getting the clock on your computer to be aligned perfectly with the GPS satellite information that's coming down. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if you're encountering any difficulties, and I'll do my best to help out.